What is up everyone, it's Dom here from Jojo Productions, and today we're gonna to talk about the Nikon D700 and using it for sports photography. I got invited by some of the kids from the high school to do some sports photography, mostly just basketball. So I said, sure, let's do it. And I just kinda of wanna briefly talk you through my experience. First thing that we're gonna talk about are the lenses. The lenses that I used were the 50 millimeter 1.8 right here that you see, and I also used a 70 to 200 2.8. And that was really all I needed. Um, I used the 50 millimeter right here um, for kind of all the stuff that would happen underneath the basket. Because this is of course not a very long lens. So I just shot all the action that happened underneath the basket. Layups, rebounds, kids driving to the basket, dunks, all that kind of stuff. I would also use this lens for uh, free throw shots because I could get part of the basket in the shot and have the kid shooting obviously in the bas uh, in the frame as well. So that was kind of nice. <clears throat> this lens was also really nice because underneath the basket, it was quite a bit darker than um, on the main part of the floor. So having that 1.8 was kind of nice having. It would let in that little bit extra light compared to the 2.8 on the 70 to 200. The 1.8 was also really nice because I could have faster shutter speeds, which would allow me to freeze the action a lot better as well. Onto the second lens, the 70 to 200. 70 to 200 was a great, fantastic lens for when I wanted to get kids driving the ball down the court really fast in a turnover situation, or if I just wanted to reach out a little bit more um, on the uh, further end of the court just to grab some action, I would do that as well. So both of those lenses were really nice to have. Um, I was very surprised that I could get away with two lenses, but I made it happen. Um, so, and honestly, the less stuff that I needed to bring, the better. Those were the two lenses that I used, the 50mm 1.8 and the 70-200 2.8. So this D700 only has a burst rate of 5 frames per second, which for most of you might sound a little slow. And in some cases, it was a little slow but I was kind of planning my shots out. I was following the action and I would kind of almost get used to what was going to happen at some point. Um, like when kids would drive it into the basket, it was probably most likely going to be a layup. I would wait for moments to get the rebound. Um, you know, I was kind of planning out my shots really nicely. And from there, you know, I would shoot maybe two or three photos and that was it. And if I did see a really nice moment happen, like one of the kids just driving it down the court really hard, I would um, just kind of lay on that shutter and let that five frames per second run. Um, but other than that, it was mostly me just kind of picking my shots here and there uh, where I wanted it. Now, sometimes I did miss the action that I wanted, which did kind of suck. Um, and I, I do wish it did have a bit of a faster burst rate for that. But other than that, I think the five frames per second on this thing was definitely more than enough. Focusing on this camera did pretty darn good. I was using the single point autofocus and I was keeping it just in the center of the frame because that is the best focus point to use. I don't think this is 2.8 eight sensitive cross type, it might be, but I know that the center focus point is going to be the fastest and the most accurate. So I just left it in the uh, center and it did just fine. Um, some of the framing was a little weird at times. There's a little too much dead space, but you can definitely crop in on that and that is more than fine. It was definitely, it was definitely fast enough with this 50 millimeter lens that I noticed, but uh, the 70 to 200, it was a little slow at times because sometimes the image would be a little too far out of focus and it would take that little extra second to um, regain the focus back on my subject, but um, I would always just kind of prime the focus, meaning I would grab focus on something where I think the action was going to happen or somewhere close to where the action was happening so it didn't have to take as long to grab that focus. Next up, ISO performance. ISO performance from the D700 is still pretty good. Um, I noticed that I was shooting at mostly around that 5,000 ISO. And from there, I would kind of adjust my shutter speed. So I was in between mostly 
around 400th of a second to about 800th of a second, depending on what lens I was using. If I was using this 50 mil here, I was shooting at usually around 1 800th of a second and like F 2.2 to f 1.8 depending and if I was on the 70 to 200 I would be obviously at 2.8 and my shutter speed would be usually around 400th of a second one thing that I also noticed is That the LCD screen here is kind of a liar um, Like when I would review the images on the back of the screen it would seem like the image was noisier than it really was. Meaning when I came back and looked at the images on the computer, they really actually weren't that bad. I just think that this old screen isn't the most accurate, which it really isn't. Color, contrast, and obviously noise. Just the overall image, this isn't like the most reliable screen to, um, to base everything off of. So shooting at 5,000 ISO looked a lot better than I anticipated. Now I know that this camera does in fact offer a battery grip, but I do not have the battery grip. And if I'm correct, I think it ups the frame rate or ups the burst rate. Is it by like a frame? I think it gives you like six frames or seven frames, something like that. It does give you that extra um, boost and frame uh, burst rate but I didn't have it. And again, like I said, the five frames per second was definitely more than enough. Um, also with the battery grip, I didn't need the battery grip um, as far as like battery life goes because the battery on this thing actually, it did pretty darn well, not gonna lie. Um, I thought it was gonna drain a lot faster than it was going to, um, but it didn't. Like. I put in a full battery and by the time that I was done shooting for the full four or five hours that I was there, um, I was only at like half a battery, which I was really, really impressed with. So if you think that you're gonna need that battery grip for extra battery life, I guess not because this battery did really, really well. Last thing that everybody's wondering, is the image quality still worth it? Is it, was it really good? I think it was really, really good. I think it did just fine. The 12 megapixels that came from this are really nice. They, when, when the image was sharp, I mean, it was tack darn sharp. Uh, the only thing that I had to do um, was adjust the white balance. That was fine. Other than that, I think these images looked really good. 12 megapixels isn't the most resolution when it comes to sports photography, because I mean, you know, most of the time you probably are going to have to crop. And when you crop in on 12 megapixels, you're easily down to like five or six megapixels with a um, small crop even. That is something that I wish was a little different. I wish this did have more resolution, but it, it's, it's fine. It does more than enough. My thing was just trying to get the frame how I wanted it in camera. Took a little practice, but after a while, I kind of got it. So there you guys go. That is using the D700 for sports photography. I think that this is a very capable camera. Even after all these years from 2008 when it was first released, image quality is there, battery life is there, autofocus is there, and even the burst rate is still pretty good as long as you kind of just pick and choose your shots. I was definitely very impressed and I will definitely be using the D700 for more sports stuff in the future. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you loved it, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments about the D700, let me know. And until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.